Welcome to this week's webisode of The Better Half. I'm Kendra D. St. Aubin. This is Katie Hartley, and we're going to take a look back at what's been going on this week. Well, Kendra, we officially have a national, championship, uh, national champion in college basketball. Uh, Kentucky came out on top 67-59 to 59 against Kansas. Congratulations to uh, Calipari and his crew. Um, but we're not going to talk about the game because it was pretty boring. So let's talk about some other highlights. Kendra, we'll start with Charles Barkley as a commentator. Commentator. I can't stand it <laughs> when they throw these pro guys on the college games. First of all, I feel bad for them initially because it's not their job to know what's going on in college basketball. They're not paying attention to that all year like the obviously the NCAA analysts are. But seriously... Just take him off the show, just or keep your mouth shut or something. I don't know. It's just it's awful when they throw guys like Charles Barkley and they try to pretend and they're constantly looking at their paper and right. Well, and there's seven of on. them at right. the table. Like there's geez, always really, too many people. Way too many. I'm not a fan of Charles Barkley as a commentator at games like that. Yeah, he's funny. Don't get me wrong, but I really could have done without that last night. I also could have done without the phrase version of the <sighs> national anthem. What was that? That is awful. I think it's a disgrace. I really think it's insulting to the national anthem and even to our country when a group goes out there and tries to do something and make it their own. The national anthem is not yours to make your own. I love traditional versions. In fact, when I was at Salt River Fields, a woman the other day, perfect, beautiful, and everyone in the press box was like, that was awesome. Yeah. Just go right through, and I'm sure you've heard it at the Suns games. Yep. When you get those performances, they go right through, real traditional. The phrase was terrible. didn't even sound like the national anthem. No, it didn't. I, I seriously at first was like, what, what are they playing? Are they going to do like a concert first and then get to the national anthem? Like, what was that? If there's a time to be traditional, it would be the national anthem. I don't think there's any, any arguing about that. <sighs> Um, but then at the end mm -hmm. was they play one shining moment. It, it's, it's it's just a, tradition. <laughs> like I, I it's don't know. It's a beautiful song, oh. but it is so cheese ball. Mm -hmm. It is so cheese ball. I get it with the highlights, blah blah blah. But I mean, can't, could they make it more manly? I feel like there have been discussions in the past about switching that song up, and every year they go back to the same one again. And well, it's one of those things that they just don't want to change because of tradition, but it's terrible. Right, and they've done a couple different versions, mm -hmm. but there's got to be some way to like make it a little more masculine yeah. because I'm like that was it was so American Idol. Oh. That's what I thought. Well, even if I was a chick, I wouldn't want that song. Yeah, it's and I mean, weird. even in the women's games, do you think Brittany Griner wants to be out there? Like, <laughs> I don't think she's going to be shedding a tear after she was. I just don't see that. So, last question about the NCAA championship game, Kendra, do you uh, do you want a unibrow now? Oh my god. That is so <laughs> awful. And you know someone has to have told him. He's got this giant I caterpillar stuck to his forehead. I love it. Oh, it's hideous. I think it looks Would awesome. Would you date a guy with that? He just doesn't care. Would you date a guy with that? Yeah, no absolutely. Way. It gives I don't him believe character. It. I don't believe it. You're full I like of crap. it. I like it. I'm going to get a unibrow. I'm going to try to start growing one right now. Next week on The Better I'm Half. I'm sure we all unibrows. could if we really tried. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Uh, how about some baseball stuff? Ubaldo Jimenez mm -hmm. intentionally hitting uh, Rockies player Troy Tulowitzki with a pitch. Uh, allegedly, I guess, intentionally hitting him with a pitch. I think it's pretty obvious that that's what he was trying to do. He did it. He got suspended for five games. Do you think that's fair? Well, first of all, his former teammate. You know, someone that he spent, you know how much time baseball players spend together, a lot of time yeah. in the clubhouse for. And I 100% think this was premeditated because Jimenez afterwards said, oh, but look, at my, my pitches were wild. I watched that. I walked that other guy on four pitches. I think he planned all that. I literally think he planned to walk the other guy and then hit Tulowitzki so he could say, that he was just wild, his fastball was wild. Five games, I think it's good enough. I don't know how much he got fined. I agree that it's, it was silly because it's spring training, but he, I bet because it was spring training, he didn't think he was gonna get in trouble. It's spring training, bro. Calm the heck down. Like, really? And five games, that's all he gets? I, I mean, well, now- Especially for a pitcher. If you're a starting pitcher, I mean, you, you may not even miss any time. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? But if it's to me, it was like so intentional. Tulowitzki is the best player on the Rockies team. He purposely did it. And five games is all he gets. I mean, to me, it's like, no, 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 You have to sit out for, like, a long time, get put in timeout, think about what you did. And now he's appealing it. Yeah. I mean, take it like a man. You did it. Own up to it. Don't do it again because you look like a doofus. 
And just stop it. Enough with this hitting in spring training. It is so stupid. Well, and I think that's part of the problem. They can play while they're appealing. So he may not miss opening day, you know, miss any starts. And the fact that when it's a starting pitcher, I think that the suspension should automatically be longer because it's not really punishing them five games. That's not enough time when you're not going to miss any playing time. If you're an everyday guy, it's different. Yeah. But five days for a pitcher is not a big deal. Yeah, well, the x-rays came back on Tulowitzki. He's fine, thank goodness. A guy that's not so fine is Grant Hill. He is out um, for several weeks uh, due to knee surgery. He says he's going to be back at the end of the season. Kendra, how much do you think Grant Hill's absence will affect the Phoenix Suns? I think it's going to make a big difference from a number standpoint as far as do they have enough guys, healthy guys, down the stretch to play the kind of minutes that they need to play. And obviously replacing Grant Hill's minutes, that was a lot of minutes. His defensive presence is what they're going to miss the most. I think everybody knows that. Everybody's talked about that. Regardless of what he does offensively, he's such a, an important piece defensively. But I think it's more going to be not necessarily about Grant Hill, but how many numbers do they have of healthy guys. You know, Nash was dealing with the back thing a little bit ago. so. Down the stretch in this condensed schedule, they're going to miss Grant Hill because of a number standpoint. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, the Suns are 2-4 and four without Grant Hill. That makes me a little bit nervous. They're going to have to do better than that down the stretch if they do want to make the playoffs, which Alvin Gentry has been very clear that that is his goal. He is going into each game as if it was a playoff game. I love that kind of attitude, but you've got to think with this absence of Grant Hill, it does make me a little bit nervous with that team. And he's such a great leader. Yeah. I mean, so at least in this in this sport, you can be there, you can be on site, you can be in the locker room, you can be mm-hmm. sitting behind the bench. You're still with your team, so I think he'll contribute. But I don't think there's any way he's back before the end of the season. I know it's wishful yeah, thinking I, on his part. I agree. I agree. Well, last topic, quickly, Kendra. Good move, bad move. Should the New York Jets do another Hard Knocks on HBO? No. Well, actually, they should just make it a Jets TV show. Don't call it (laughs) Hard Knocks with whoever. It seems like the Jets do it every year. And I just think, I mean, first of all, it's it's great for TV. It's great for reality. It's like watching a train wreck. That's basically what it's like. But I think it's stupid. Find a new team. And Jets, you really need this attention. It's silly. Oh, good move. I say do it. I love a good drama. There's really enough of those on TV. But I love it. Mark Sanchez, Tim oh, Tebow. Geez. Like, I can't wait to oh, see it. Oh, no. I cannot wait oh, to see it. All right, Kendra. Awesome. We are out of time. Until next week, you can follow her on Twitter at Kendra620. You can follow me at FunKatie620. We'll see you next week with another webisode of The Better Half.